Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Daily Devotions. <laughs> Pastor Steve here in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, because we're talking about the disciple who turned into the apostle, Matthew. And uh, we'll just spend this last day on just a couple days and actually going daily uh, through the next disciples because there just isn't much on them in the scriptures, but we can always, always dig a little deeper and see how Jesus calls them, how Jesus uses them, how Jesus disciples them, how Jesus sends them, and what he sends them into. And also, obviously, it's everlasting life because of their faith, because of the faithfulness of Jesus and his ministry. And so Matthew chapter 13 really speaks to that because as we talked yesterday about Matthew, Levi, he was a tax collector of the Roman government. And as he was, he was kind of despised. He was rejected in the fact that he wasn't a part of the religious system, even though he was a Hebrew, even though he was a Jew, um, but yet kind of sold that off to be a Roman tax collector. And Jesus comes to his booth and calls him and says, follow me. And he heads to his house, eats with them, eats with sinners, and transforms their lives. And that's what the kingdom of God is truly all about. The kingdom of God is something that we can't fathom, that we can't reason, that we don't even understand sometimes, but it defies our reasoning and understanding for the purposes of communicating the grace and the mercy and the salvation of God through Jesus Christ. And Matthew experienced that. Matthew chapter 13 then tells about a parable about a scribe. It also tells a parable about those who are good and bad, or those who are uh, faithful and righteous or unfaithful and unrighteous as well. That there is a separation. And Jesus is teaching his disciples. And as Matthew records it, Matthew is really reflecting really upon himself. It says teacher of the law, but it talks about a scribe. And Matthew would have been known as a scribe. A scribe that was somebody who could record and do two things well written. And a tax collector needed to be that. It was someone of order, someone that could uh, collect, someone that could organize, because as they were bringing in those collections, they needed to scribe, write them down in a certain manner for the Roman government. So you get to see a little self-reflection here from the disciple Matthew leading us into the apostle Matthew and what he did later in his life. Matthew chapter 13, verse 47. It's called the parable of the net. Jesus is speaking in all of these parables during this time of the gospel of Matthew. And he says in verse 47 of chapter 13, Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that has been let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Self-reflection is being able to uh, say here within Matthew, saying, I was sitting at that booth and I was declared wicked. And so I'm in the bad batch. I'm in the weeping and gnashing of the teeth area. That's how I was viewed. That's how I was perceived. That's actually how I w it was. That was probably my reality in life. But I want to be in the righteous. I want to be in the good. I want to be in the basket. You've cast this net throughout the, all the people and you bring them in and you separate them. But how do I become righteous? Jesus calls, follow me. He is righteousness. He is right with God. And he gives that as another gift to us. Wicked, that's our nature. Yes, that's our reality. But Jesus calls us out of wickedness into righteousness through his grace. And Jesus says in verse 51, have you understood this? Have you, have, have you understood all these things? Jesus asked them. Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law, every scribe, kind of pointing at Matthew here, right? Every teacher of the law, every scribe who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven, as he just has with the parable um, not just this parable, but the parables before, if you want to read uh, farther today. Who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures 
as well as old. New converts as ones who actually had it in their heart but weren't living in that manner. Matthew, scribes, tax collectors, sinners. It's like the house owner, Jesus, who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. The kingdom of God is grace-filled and pursuing sinners, tax collectors, scribes, people who are wicked in their sin because he's going to declare them righteous in the kingdom of heaven. New and old, but all together. The net that Jesus casts for righteousness to God. Matthew was transformed by the calling of Jesus. He was a disciple. He was walking and living with Jesus for three years. And then he was an apostle, a sent one of Jesus as well. We don't have that in scripture where he was sent and what kind of ministry he was doing, but tradition and history, historians that were writing about the disciples, about the apostles, uh, really speak to Matthew um, going to Ethiopia and also to Syria, north and a little bit south, but more of this south central area. I want to read to you from the uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs um, as it speaks towards each apostle. Uh, and it says, Matthew here says, Little is known about the Apostle Matthew's later life and the time and manner of his death, but legendary accounts say that he traveled to Ethiopia where he became associated with Candace, as we see in Acts chapter 8, verse 27, and that he was martyred in that country. Some writings say he was pinned to the ground and beheaded with a halberd. A halberd is this axe-like instrument. It also had like this... Um, I was just reading up on it. You can Google it yourself. <laughs> but being able to say this little point on the other end of it. But it was an axe-like instrument. So he was beheaded with a halberd in the city of Naraba, or Nadayar, Ethiopia, in AD 60. Martyred. We know, not according to legend, but we know even of Jesus' uh, words, that John, excuse me, the Apostle John was the one who was going to die a natural death, and he did. But everybody else was going to die for their faith, and they did. Matthew was martyred, what we get to see, according to history, in AD 60, in a, in a gruesome way, but it just continues to circulate. It continues to unite all of these disciples scattered from the cross, come back together in the resurrection, and come back together and unite in the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ called them, transformed their lives, called them from wickedness and sin, and brought them transformation into righteousness and grace. And as that was, they were willing to go to the ends of the earth as they knew it, to, to profess and proclaim this good news, and even go to their death for it. You don't die for something you don't really truly believe in. And seeing the resurrected Christ, they believed blessed by his teachings and his authority and his calling. They knew their calling, their purpose in life to be able to go, yes, even into death for the truth that Jesus was alive, that Jesus was the Christ, that Jesus was their Lord, and that Jesus was their righteousness. All of those sayings, all of those realities and truths, they're ours as well. He said to Timothy, as we talked about long ago, <laughs> blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. Yet we do see. We do see God in action in his word and in his sacraments. We do see God in action through his people, through the righteousness and faithfulness that he has called by the gospel to his people, you and me, brothers and sisters in Christ. And we too don't need to go to the ends of the earth, but we can live our lives today with the purpose that Jesus is our righteousness, Jesus is our Lord. Jesus has called us from our wicked sin, our nature of sin, into the grace-filled kingdom of heaven and promise us everlasting life through his mission, through his sacrifice, through his grace. And so be blessed this day. Blessed with the gospel, proclaiming the gospel, living out the gospel. Because no longer are we seen by our Heavenly Father, the one who is the King of the kingdom of heaven. 
as sinners, but rather saints. Gospel, grace-given, blood-bought and forgiven children of God. Righteous, right with him because of Jesus. Let us be celebrating our righteousness to God and be right with the people around us. Have a blessed day.